Hello, Katie. Hey, how's it going? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Just doing fantastic. <laughs> Got my you water. Doing? Got your water. Taylor Swift is introducing her second single. So that's yeah, be, I don't know about that one. I haven't heard it yet. So okay, well, I can tell you. I mean, it's I think it's better than the first. So there you go. Okay, um, great. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us for the Church Communications Podcast. Whether you're watching on Facebook Live, you're watching on YouTube, or you're checking us out on the audio version and on your favorite podcasting app, we thank you for hanging out with us. Today's sponsor is the National Discipleship Forum. Brought to you, which is brought to you by discipleship.org. Join 1,000 plus disciple makers in Nashville, Tennessee for this two-day forum that will help equip you as a disciple maker. Get 20% off the promo code CHURCHCOM. Learn from disciple makers like Jim Putman, Tom Rayner, Trisha Trilla Newbell, Robert Coleman, Nate Larkin, Ariana Rimson, Daniel M., Dan Spader, Kenan Vaughn, Todd Wilson, and others. 13 tracks, 15 plus speakers, and 65 plus workshops. 13 organizations devoted to equip you to make you a to help to equip you to make disciples. We offer practical training so you can grow. Almost didn't get to that last part there, folks. Go to discipleship.org and use the promo code churchcom, and you can find the link in the registration in our show notes. I'll be throwing it in there in a little bit for you guys to to, ch to check out. So anyway, so there we go. That's our sponsor. And again, we thank discipleship.org and the National Discipleship Forum for Disciple Making Forum. Yada, 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 folks, I'm going to be able to do this at one point. It's the Disciple Making Forum brought to you by discipleship.org. So there you go. Uh, you know uh, why? You know why I'm having you on struggling? Because I sat in a hour long meeting today about disciple making. And I've been saying the word disciple making and discipleship probably no a million less than, times today. A million times today. Yeah. No less than that. So there you yeah. go. All right, Katie, let's dive totally in. Fun. It is. It's uh, totally fun. All right, let's dive into the big five. Uh, okay, so we will start with Facebook rolling out watch to everyone in the U.S. So you should have the watch um, icon now on your uh, Facebook app. So, yeah, I do as well. So I haven't actually used it. Has anyone used it? Question mark. <laughs> uh, question the funny mark. part is I love to watch videos on Facebook. So I don't know why I haven't. Maybe I just haven't. I don't know. It's been out maybe for a week and I just haven't had time. But I know Humes of New York has done a TV show and I'm really looking forward to watching it. Okay. Like, pretty pumped about it. See, I never, I'm a total YouTuber. Like I have a YouTube red subscription and everything. So I am, I'm not the person for that. So I'm thinking, I just don't think of going to Facebook and watching videos, but I when, know, I, right, when I pick on the, when I hit the watch tab though, I have to say like, I, it's a nice experience. It's a I, very, it's a nice user experience. It really is. Yeah. It so really, I'm just, I'm just wondering what's going to happen. Um, well, I guess we'll see. You can start, you can make a watch list, you know, so you yeah. can like, curate your own content, you know. Um, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at new this week. I mean, these look like legit. I say legit in the sense of like, they look well, like well-produced. It's funny thing is they're either clips from TV shows or they are TV shows, but I mean, it's a good shot if you if you want to go. Against I mean, they're YouTube. putting in their money into some original content, and you know, we we had uh, Dan Wonderlick in the group who yeah, talked right. about you can get your own Facebook Watch show, perhaps for your church, and so uh, we can maybe try to drop the link over yeah. to how to apply to become a Facebook Watch show if you want. Yeah. And that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, you really, it, it, they're looking for really well produced things. So, yeah. um, you know, the possibility of this becoming a watch show is kind of low. It's, we'll, we'll, it's we'll, kind of low. Guys, if we, we can get always better. dream. We can always dream. <laughs> we can dream um, of being awesome. Okay, guys. Um, we want that we can. But, yeah. you know, uh, for the church, I think it could be a really cool uh Thanks. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see. You know, I feel like the internet is so much more powerful than broadcast television at this point. I don't know how hard it's going to be co to convince everyone else, but I'm like, we have the statistics. Like, we can actually yes. say these people watch this for this long. Where, like, with broadcast TV, you can say, oh, we reached 20,000 homes, but like, did you really though, or did they just flip on it for like five minutes and then flip off of it? I, you know, I don't know how, like, yeah, like the, we do more theoretical. <laughs> Well, we dealt with that. We dealt with that with the uh, Christmas program. Christmas, Christmas program, right? And so we say, like, well, what's your numbers? And they say, well, we think you reached X amount of households. It was X amount of people. I said, yeah. you think or you know? Like, I'm not trying to be, um, 
I don't use hair gel, Kyle. This is all natural, my friend. I'll actually show that. that Sorry, show that. Uh, Kyler came up with a question of what kind of hair gel that Daryl uses. Yes, and I, I don't. This is this is all natural. Um, so, question is 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 I'm gonna hide that now. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So we we would, we were we were asking the TV station like, and, and then this is not a shot at them at all. I mean, they're they're great. No, that's just with, how TV works. But that's how TV works, and so you don't they, really. Get they don't know exactly. I mean, they can say, "Well, we estimate that this many people were watching it," and. Yeah, exactly. They don't know, you know, and so, but with the internet, you really can know how many people you're, you're reaching. So uh, that's kind of the funny part. Like, I'm like, we're doing evangelism. And if you do it online, you can really see how many people you're like reaching. And I don't know. So it's like, I don't know. I like the metrics so much better. I just do. I do. Speaking of video online, uh, uh, the international not international, the Interactive Advertising Bureau just released their first ever guide to digital video advertising. And so I found this today, started looking through it, and it's really, really cool. Um, and, and so we're going to put a link to it. Um, and so what it gives you is it gives you a whole breakdown of stats on, on advertising or, 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 how, or how you should do video. And it breaks down uh, digital video, uh, advertising data metrics, mobile video, automation, all that kind of stuff. So you, it, and it gives you some really good insight into terms of like, basically, if you think about it, this, is like a really good primer. If you're ever trying to, if you ever have to build one of those things where you get a, a white paper, if you will, to use that language, to turn around and convince people to be like, this is why we should do online church, or this is why we should do whatever, dive into Facebook ads. But there's just some really. Uh, like they talk about how much how much is enough if you're trying to run an ad or trying to do something for frequency, and they say think minimums, not maximums, for most metrics. Incremental exposures lead to higher results um, versus just like one big video that you watch. In other words, you hit repeated results by doing like smaller repeated targeted ads. And so it's just like I thought it's really interesting. I mean, not all this stuff is applicable to the church, but you can take a lot of this language in here and learn how to adapt it and use it. And you'll one, you'll look a lot smarter in front of the people that you work with. And two, more than likely, you'll probably see better results because you're actually using probably, I would say, more uh, professor, professional methodology and strategies to, uh, to to get your to get your to get your point across. And as you think through how you're going to use mobile video on Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, whatever platform that is. So Having I, stats I thought it was really nice. a good idea. Yes, Even I mean, stats, it's usually yeah. like, OK, pretty clear that obviously someone's using this or someone's not. So. Yeah, and it talks about really what, what, a, what a KPI is. So if you don't know what a KPI is, it's key performance indicator. And like those are the metrics like this is like how, how do we know we're winning? And we, you know, the funny thing is, is you and I had that conversation today about video. Like what is a key performance indicator for us on video? Like we were like, how many views do we need? How many views? We how many views? And, and like, just, I'm like, 100 views probably is justifiable, but like less than 100. I'm like, why are we keeping it? Why are we doing it? Like. And specifically, to live on the internet or not? We were looking at the video views, and we were not looking at just plays. We were looking at finished people actually finished the video and right, video. which is almost always half. It seemed like yes. So that's if you struggle with that, we struggle with that as well. We struggle with this idea of like how much effort do I put in a video that I know only a small right. audience is going to see? Right. It's just tough. Yeah. So the next. Uh, thing on our list is an infographic on how U.S. women feel about branded content. So is this uh, about partners, like people who are, um, okay, social sites being the most popular place to be sponsored content across all ages per an influencer study. So these are people who are influencers and how they feel about that. Uh, women, 56% said, I enjoy branded content when it feels authentic. So that's pretty good. I feel like that's that's half. Uh, 56% again said when it's entertaining and 53% said when it tells a story, um, generation X enjoys branded content more or like least actually they yeah. enjoy it the least in comparison to generation Z, which is coming up. Um, actually sent Daryl a, a video and I was like, this is the most generation Z yeah. video I've ever seen in my life. And it's actually a friend of mine, uh, her is, uh, anyway, through the, Grapevine, just like yeah. a mutual friend. And I was watching it and I was like, wow, like this is really how Generation Z like like communicates with the world. So she like started her own YouTube channel and she was kind of just talking to, you know, herself and then like 
she was having someone film her like as she was walking and like I was like huh I would never do that like it's yeah. not something that's like innate in me yeah um it is innate in me to talk like to write statuses and like share because that, that, that's something I did growing up no matter what because we I'm like the live journal generation oh, yeah. you know yeah, so no, like, I get that I'm I'm good with like writing out my thoughts like that, but like video to me is still a little int- almost intrusive. So like I'm like I don't think anybody wants to watch me walk me watch me walk down the street and like wave at the camera. Like I'm just like that seems weird to me. I don't know. But we're living again in the experience age, not the information age. And so uh, that people Generation Z especially they want to be in the experience with you. So. How much more are they going to be doing that kind of stuff? I mean, Snapchat is definitely the number yeah. one example of that. Like, they want to be in the moment with you. Uh, I think I think VR is going to be huge with Generation Z once it really catches on. I, I really kind of think like once you can really be in the moment of a Coldplay concert, like you know, without actually having to be there, it's it's yeah. going to be an interesting. Oh, I completely agree. I, I I couldn't agree. I, I mean, I posted the ad because I I wanted to show like. You know, there is a what they're saying is is there is a difference in terms of in terms of females how they're viewing the content, and I think we've, we've talked before is is a lot of males forget they're creating content for females. So that was one side of it. But you bring up a good point about the Generation Z part. Um, is uh, what's up, Jacob? Um, they the Generation Z thing, which I find really interesting, is is. My wife is obsessed with it, and so I just dropped a link um, in the in the chat on the for the, on the live feed um, about Generation Z, and it's a website totally dedicated to it. And my wife, who is a student minister, has been a student minister for almost seventeen years. Um, what she points out is is that when she saw the leap from millennials to Gen Z, one of the leaps she saw was she was like, you know, millennials. She's like, they're entrepreneurs. She's like, but they, to a certain degree, they somewhat play within the rules and the guidelines um but she, said, but she says generation uh generation z on the other hand um what they do is is hello high water they're going to do whatever they want in other words yeah. if they have an idea and you're going to stop them they're going to jump in and they're going to turn around and they're going to do that idea and i'll give you a prime example of that um if you follow a youtuber named jake paul he decided I'm going to Houston. I'm just going to get a jet ski. I'm going to go rescue people. You know, that's what he just does. And so he he probably didn't follow any protocols whatsoever and just kind of jumped in and just did it. And my wife's, my wife has pointed out to me, she's like, you have got to be ready that if you don't will, and I willing to collaborate with this next generation in terms of how you use social media and that kind of stuff, they're going to just do it themselves. Yep. And just, just get used to that. And so I've kind of had to be like, talk about, if you got control issues, like that's going to be a thing. You got to deal with that. Yeah, I think the more we can get them involved, I mean, it's almost like, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about having a personality for our web presence, for the church's web presence. Yeah. And how Mike, our, our pastor, doesn't have enough time to necessarily be the web presence of John yeah. Baptist Church. And so um, we're, we've talked about me doing it. We've talked about you doing it. We've talked about some maybe having some other people um, run with that. And um, and that's almost like an influencer thing. Does that, you know, like it's almost, yeah, it is. yeah it's kind of like you're just giving a trusted face to the, to the, to the nameless body. Like, you know, like Bromo Baptist yeah. church. I mean, you think of Mike Glenn, like you think of that, but like you, it's kind of just introducing different faces and, and having like a warm and welcoming tone. I think that's what influencers do. Like they give a face to Coca-Cola or they give a face to Duncan Hines, you know, like it, it gives um, some trust and so like giving a face to something I think is really. So, so, yeah. So you're bringing up a good point. So like, I wonder how many people in our group of our communicators feel like to a certain degree, they end up becoming the de facto voice of their church. And if you think about it, it's kind of funny because they probably are don't know, they're doing it. don't know they're doing it, one, and, and don't realize they're doing it. And two, <laughs> they will reach more people in a week than the sermon may on a Sunday morning. And sometimes yeah. there's this little awkward part where you're like, you may formally not be a minister. Or you may formally not, you know, yeah. you may never preach. But all of a sudden, you're kind of cast in this light of kind of going, you have the large, you end up having the largest megaphone. So yeah. do you turn that? 
So imagine if it's the Instagram camera, do you turn that Instagram camera around and you all of a sudden become part of the story or do you keep it faced out to the audience? And yeah. so part of me wonders if it's not better if you bring the camera out to face you so you can give the audience a actual human connection of I'm the person who's going to guide you through this visual sure journey as we, as we tell the story of our church. Yeah. And that's, you know, when I was, I, w I did Facebook live pretty much the entire week or I did Instagram live. Actually, I did Facebook live the year before and Instagram live this past year uh, during VBS. And the entire time I was like, I, I'm, I'm, they're a part of it. I know that like they, they're happy about it because they're seeing their kids, but I'm like, but really, are you just confused? Cause you're just looking at a vast crowd of children and like, you feel like a little confused. Like, I feel like that's the whole point of having like an anchor broadcasting the news. Oh, that's great. That they're giving you context to what is happening around them. So. Yeah. And I think I, I yeah, yeah, Katie brings this up. She, uh, Katie Isabel brings this up. She says, sometimes she feels like she had this ministry that isn't considered a ministry. And right. I think. Oh, what, you're just nailed it on the head, Katie Isabel. <laughs> Cause like, that is so true. Like, I feel like that every day I'm like, and, and I'm technically a licensed minister. Don't tell the church. Um, <laughs> but, right. Like they hire me. They had no idea. I was the right. Southern Baptist licensed minister. But um, and I and I felt called to ministry. I felt called to ministry my entire life. And that's obviously why I'm here doing it. But um, at the same time, I'm not really a minister. So it's kind of like, OK, I don't have a seminary degree, but I have a master's in mass communication. And, right. I, you know, I know. Jesus pretty well. We're good friends. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll think, just see uh, how that goes along. I, I'm totally, I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, uh, Katie Isabel's right. I mean, it doesn't feel like that ministry is considered a ministry. I think that's going to change. Change. It's I, going to change. Definitely. I think you as they, the they say, Meredith Gold posted in our group. I shared it actually with you on teams earlier today, just about how oh, okay, the, yes. the internet needs more online ministers. Like we yeah. need more ministers online and how can we, and especially during the hurricane, man, what a great um, way to minister to people who are suffering it by praying for them and meeting their needs yeah. physically. Like if you were there and you were, and you were capable of doing that, like the internet just helped that so much more. I mean, and then it was really cool in the power admins group. Someone shared a story about how they felt like they were um, like how they were able to mark themselves as unsafe during the hurricane and, that that connected them with someone who could come get them. Yeah. See, I, I, yeah, I think, I think what I would tell people that feel like what they're doing is not valued. Um, I would tell you, this is the future's on your side. Yeah. The future's I mean, on your side. It is. It is like, I mean, at, as we go on, like the thing is like, it's already here though. That's the thing that what I loved about that article. It said the church like it's not later it's here now like this isn't the future of the church this is the church now and so we have to figure out how do we how do we do it um you know we we always are 10 years behind and and i don't think that we can be behind anymore like i think the gospel is too important for us to yeah. wait so speaking of, speaking of being behind uh our last story is this it's about whatsapp whatsapp confirms it's testing tools for business the whatsapp business unit is testing to verify business accounts and tools that will allow you basically your organization to start communicating with users offering notifications um for whatever it is that you want to notify them on in regards to using the whatsapp um this is interesting because i'm not a whatsapp user but my understanding is is a lot of people use it katie are you are you a whatsapp I, user i have never downloaded whatsapp and that's kind of odd right because i feel like maybe I, I mean i have friends who live internationally but they all use snapchat to communicate with me oh really yeah my international friends especially use snapchat because it's not as blocked as facebook is oh okay in some Interesting. countries, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I haven't been to Poland, but <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been to certain places where like, it's like a certain websites where like they offer you, how do you want to share it? Do you want to share it on Facebook? Yeah. You know, whatever. And then WhatsApp. And I'm like, going, who uses WhatsApp? But maybe they do. No, you know? I mean, that's obviously a huge user base. I mean, it's like sure a huge user base. That's why Facebook bought them for so much money, but I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see not just WhatsApp messenger um, ads, but like Facebook messenger ads. Um, yeah. what we can do with that for the church in the next, uh, especially around Christmas. I, I'm I looking forward to testing out some new different things. So there you go. All right, Katie, you want to talk about today's hot topic? Today's hot topic brought to you yeah. by 
<laughs> Just kidding. Canva doesn't no. sponsor a podcast. But we're going to talk about does Canva hurt professional design? Okay, so this is a, what we do is, folks, is we're gonna we're gonna test this we're gonna test this out. We are going to highlight one post that was a somewhat controversial hot topic in the group, and we're gonna give you our thoughts on it um, as we think it stirred up a lot of interesting discussion. So um, we had a post this week about the tool Canva. If you don't know what Canva is, it's a tool by which you can turn around and you can create design. Uh, via your web browser, iPhone, iPad, et cetera, um, using some templates and turn around and then kick out a PDF, uh, JPEG, whatever file you need. And a whole bunch of various formats. It's, it's, it's like a Swiss Army knife to a certain degree. Um, and so the question is, is does it degrade design in the sense that it makes every, does it democratize everything and make everybody a good designer, quote unquote, to use that language? Does it hurt people who are in the design trade and who, would tell you they believe they, they know because they've been educated on what good, de good design is. So does a tool like this hurt design? And I say that because this is a tool that I think a good portion of our audience uses. And so we've also got a good portion of our audience that are professional designers. So they probably feel slightly disenfranchised by this tool. So that's kind of the premise of the argument. Does, does it hurt or is it kind of this thing where like you just got to get over it? That's the market. Here we go. So we had a wide variety of opinions in the group on this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm even trying to find the post and I'm like, I can't find it. But, um, you know, so I like Canva for creating those really simple, quick graphics that yeah. like aren't going to matter tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. You know, like um, I just want to create a quick quote graphic. I want to create a quick thing to promote this ministry. Um, I think it's good for some print stuff uh, on occasion, too. I mean, especially like a flyer that you're going to hand out and it's not yeah. going to matter. But um, for things that are lasting, I mean, creating branding, I don't think you could or would want to create your branding in Canva. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you would need to bring it into Canva um, from something else. I don't know. What do you think? Well, okay. So here's the, here's the struggle I have. I understand, and I have close friends who are designers. Yeah. Um, and so I've done design work myself. Um, so... Um, I understand the fear, not say fear. I understand the, the kind of like the, I would say fear. It's a little bit like, okay, wow, this is great. I'm not, I'm not so sure about everybody having this tool. It, you know, it's a little bit like, is it, is it the equivalent of giving somebody Microsoft clip art and, you know, all of a sudden they get a copy of a publisher and clip art before you know it, you're, you're trying to get rid of flowers with comic sans on them. Um, I, I think to a certain degree though, we're going to see this pattern come across the board in other venues. Um, right now, Canva is just doing design. I think video will be there at some point on a yep. much more better level by which, I mean, even, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the app, the, the BSCO, you know what I'm talking about? Um, Visco. Visco. I Visco. think that's what people call it. I don't know. Yeah, Visco. Yeah, so Visco. I'll call it Visco. Um, Visco, you know, just recently launched the ability for you to color grade your video. Um, Ooh, in the app? So, in the app. Um, I think oh, you have to have like the, your pro <laughs> account. So I signed up for a trial, the pro account. And I was like, it, it looks great. You can tweak it and so forth. And so that, which makes my really horrible footage of my kids skateboarding. A Look, thousand cool. better. So like when that stuff happens, I think that's just a natural evolution of the market. And as much right. as I understand, I, I fully understand that there's a reason why people go to design school for four years. They train. Oh, yeah. They for intern, and I get that. And, for major projects that like yes. well, you need to solve a problem. Yes, I totally get that. But I also get this. I also get if I'm a, if I am my job, if my job is to manage the web, do the bulletin, um, you know, maybe create shoot video, graphics. create social media graphics. I've got to have every tool at my disposal to make myself look good. And you know what? If Canva's going to do it, go for it. You can't sit there and kind of go, especially if you don't have the budget. You've got yeah. to do what you need to get ministry done. And sometimes it's messy. And sometimes I hate to say it, it's not perfect. But the reality yeah. of it is, is, is you got to get the work done because you know what your job, <laughs> your job depends on it. Yeah. So I, I, I hear my friends who say that, but I just also kind of know I've been there. You've been there when you're in a pension, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with using it for like very generic things, like for a very, like, this is simple. I don't need it to be amazing, this thing, but right. where you're like creating like something that really speaks to your brand, like your annual report. I don't know. I feel like maybe you should put a little more 
uh, I don't know. It should be like an end design. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it depends. Like I'll tell you where I use it. One, number one reason I use it is when I have to create something for Facebook or Twitter and I can't remember the dimensions and I don't want to Google the dimensions because I don't have them written You're down right. anywhere. I open up Canva, I go Facebook <clears> post <throat> and then I take whatever I've somewhat got an idea and I go and I quickly create it or I even yes. drag a pre-done image over there and crop it and then I shoot it out because I'm just like, I'm too lazy to go Google it. I'm just like, just go to Canva, hit this and hit this and before you know, it's out the door. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. All righty. Okay. So, you want to just go for yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just cut you off. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Shout outs for the week, guys. Um, so Kyler Nixon, you're running our Twitter like a boss right now. And we just can't, we just can't say thank you enough. I mean, if we had a clap, uh, whatever real, we would play it for you. Like, exactly. If you if you aren't following us on Twitter, you should be because Kyler is giving out some free knowledge, just dropping it left and right. So, hey Dan Wonderlick, we talked about you earlier. We did. So you have to watch that later. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So we really really appreciate it because there's no way we can manage the Twitter account, the Facebook groups, and all the stuff without the mods and people like Kyler jumping in and helping us out. So. Really yeah, appreciate our mods it. are just fantastic. They're They're fantastic. Incredible. We're so grateful to be, um, you know, uh, working alongside, serving alongside such wonderful, lovely people. Maybe at some point we'll get somebody to run our Instagram account too while we're at it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know. We need help, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we need help. We need help in so many ways. But yes, friends are friends forever if the Lord is the Lord of them. So. Exactly. That's what I heard. All righty. So there we go. So folks, thanks for hanging out and joining with uh, joining us on today's podcast. Um, if you like this podcast, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you're watching this, hit share and like. Well, you can't share it because you're inside the Facebook group. Duh, I should know that. Don't worry. We're going to start doing this on the page, you guys, probably soon. So yes. when we Make move it over to the page, you'll be able to actually subscribe to all live notifications. Yes, that's true. And that will make it awesome for us. That, there we go, sir. There we go. So yeah. So I take it back. You can like it. You can't share it. I appreciate that. But you know what you can do is you can go to YouTube and you hit subscribe. Or if you're listening on the audio version, find us on iTunes and hit subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thank you all for listening and watching. Yeah.